Okay, we're going to look at creating a navbar now with custom shape icons. So if you open the flag2.psd file um, and also the palmtree.psd and icons.psd file. So we can see in icons.psd that Photoshop comes with some custom shapes built in, but you can also create create your own custom shapes. So what we're going to do is from the shape menu, we're going to choose custom shape. And then in the properties panel, you can have a look at what pre-built shapes come shipped with Photoshop. Um, so <clears throat> there's just a small selection there by default. But if you click on the arrow on the right, you can see what other shapes are available. If you just select all, we can append that onto our shape list and see all of the icons that Photoshop already has. Um, so we're going to create a shape now from this list, the sun icon, and make sure that the style is set to null in our properties panel. And then drag out the shape on the document. You can make this any size because it's a vector shape, so it's not going to lose quality if you make it bigger or smaller. And we can turn off the vector outline by clicking on the shape thumbnail in the layers panel. And you can resize it bigger, as I said, without losing any quality. And if we open up flag2.psd file, we're going to actually create a custom shape from a photograph now, which is a very useful thing to do. Um, there's lots of different ways to use the selection tool, but what we're going to do is cut this flag out from the background. And we're going to use the quick selection tool here just to save time. Um, in the properties panel, after you've uh, created your selection around the edge of the flag, you can use the subtract or add in the properties panel to add or remove elements of your selection if it's not perfect. So you're not going to end up with a perfect selection here because the quick selection tool is quick for a reason, but it's more than enough for what we need for the purposes of this exercise. Um, then we're going to choose select and invert the selection of, so that we're selecting the flag instead of the background. And then in the properties bar you can choose refine edges and just adjust the settings here so that we get a nice clean uh, line shape outline on our shape. And just click on the mask preview so we can see what it's actually going to look like uh, when we cut it out. And finally, we're going to open the paths panel. Click the icon at the bottom of the paths panel to create what's called a work path. And then double click the work path to make it into a real path. And finally, we're going to make it into a custom shape by choosing edit, define custom shape, and then give it the name flag in this case. Go back to our icons.psd and select from select the custom shape tool and then from the custom shape menu go all the way to the bottom and we should see our new custom shape the flag has been added to our list of available icons so drag it out onto the stage and resize and reposition it appropriately for our navigation bar here and then we can click on the shape icon to remove the outline okay we're going to go through this process very quickly, one more time, if we open the palmtree.psd file and hold down control and click on the thumbnail image in the layers panel to create a selection. Open the paths panel and just double click on the work path that's already created here. Um, and then go to edit, define custom shape, name it palm tree, go back to our main file and drag the shape out from the custom shape drop down menu onto our document. Very quick, very easy way to create your own custom shapes in Photoshop CS 5.1. Now we're going to look at how to build a gel button. And gel buttons are very popular on the internet. They have this web 2.0 look about them, although they're slightly overused at this stage and have become a cliche in themselves. But there's lots of ways to make gel buttons. And we're going to look at one way in particular right now. So the first thing we're going to do is select the rounded rectangle tool from the shape drop down menu. And we're going to increase the radius of this rectangle shape to 36 pixels. So the edges are rounder than the default setting. Next, we're going to add a layer style and choose color overlay. And we're going to add a light green color to uh, put over the shape. 
And then we're going to add the satin layer effect and adjust the options here. So the first option we're going to change in satin is to change the color to light green. Uh, not the same green that we used for our shape, but we're going to use a brighter version. So make it stand out a little bit from the original green. Next, we're going to change the blend mode to overlay uh, so that the color is going to highlight instead of darken. And then we're going to change the angle to 90 degrees. We're going to change the distance and the size to both 25 pixels. And choose the contour drop down menu and just select the one which is second from the left at the bottom. Um, you can just sort of scroll through these to see what the different effects look like. But the one uh, second from the left at the bottom is one we're going to go with for now. And then tick the anti alias box uh, again. Okay, and that's us finished with satin. Now we're going to add a bevel and emboss effect and also tick the contour option. We're going to go into the bevel and emboss uh, settings and increase the size to 7 pixels and change soften to 2 pixels. We're going to choose highlight mode and make the opacity all the way up to 100%. And under shadow mode, we're going to reduce the opacity to 0%. Then we're going to add an inner glow and change the options to the following. We're going to change the color from yellow to dark green. And we're going to make the blend mode multiply. So this time we're, look, we're working with the shadow effects here. We're going to increase the choke to 35 and the size to 7 pixels. And that's us finished with inner glow. Next we're going to add an inner shadow and change the color to a darker green again from black. And increase the choke to 25 and the size to 18 to make it blend in a little bit better. And finally we'll add an outer glow to our button and reduce the opacity of the outer glow to 37%, change the size to 10 pixels, and change the color to a light green, similar to the button itself. And now we've created a very quick uh, but effective gel button using Photoshop CS 5.1.